Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Jeremiah Stream Amateur with J-Man Seminars with Millennial Who Talks, episode number 17. Changing lives, inspiring others with real stories from real estate rock stars from across the country. And we're here today with Ricky Carruth. Am I saying it right? Yeah, yeah okay. man, you got it. Ricky Carruth from Alabama. Let's get right into it, Ricky. Tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, how you got started in real estate. I know it's a great story and I don't want to waste any time. Well, man, it's a long story, but I'll keep it short. I grew up in South Alabama on the beach. And, uh, you know, as a kid growing up on the beach, you take it for granted. You don't realize you're growing up in one of the most beautiful places in the world. So um, it wasn't until I went to college in Missouri. That's when I realized I grew up in the you know middle of paradise. And uh, but anyway, my dad was a roofer. Mom, mom cut hair. And uh, I mean, really, the reason I am who I am and why I'm the way I am is because my dad and my mother were both entrepreneurs. They owned their own businesses, but they were also blue collar workers. So I got to see them run their business and work really hard at the same time. And then to take it further, my dad was a hard worker and my mom was a big dreamer. So, you know, hard workers don't want to dream big because they're scared they're going to lose everything they work for. Big dreamers don't want to work hard because they think their one idea is going to get them, you know, make them a million dollars. So I got the best of all worlds growing up. And by the time I was a teenager, I started roofing houses with my father. And that was really where I developed my work ethic and learned everything I needed to learn about how to really produce. Because when you roof houses, you get paid for how many shingles you lay. You don't get paid for how many hours you work, right? Oh, yeah. You know, so, um, you know, most people, when they start working, they, uh, they're they working by the hour. And so when they transition into a career like real estate where you get paid for production, not just being there, it's really tough because they're already programmed to just get paid for just being there. So I was lucky enough to, to be brought up in a paid for production type situation. And, uh, you know, by watching my dad work so hard, it, it really inspired me to, like, want to be the best at everything. So before I, before I quit roofing, I was actually, you know, he was the best. And then by the time I quit roofing, he was still the best, but I beat him to the top of the roof a couple times. It was pretty cool. <laughs> it's got to be hard work in Alabama in the summertime, huh? Well, the thing about it is, man, is when you're born into something, you don't know any different. You, don't you know, know what I mean? Right. Like, I absolutely love roofing. I didn't know there, that, like, I love, I I just love the work, really, is what it boils down to. But, uh, you know, I, I didn't realize, you know, roofing was bad or something. It was just like what we did. Um, you know, I also, uh, there was a point in my life where I roofed houses and served tables at night. And, uh, dude, during that time, I was so dark. I looked like, <laughs> straight Caribbean Islander. I mean, it was crazy. So, and I live on a beach. So I was serving tables in a seafood restaurant and people would come down here on vacation and I would be their server. And uh, they would always get pictures with me because I look like this, like out of the country, crazy <laughs> Islander guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, but that, that was a funny time. But anyway, um, how I got into real estate is, is uh, I knew that I wanted to do really great things. And uh, I knew roofing wasn't like my path. So I knew roofing was what I needed to do to, to learn work ethic and like take everything to another level. Am I freezing up on you? Uh, you, you did first, just a quarter of a second. You're good now. Right. Cool. So I, uh, yeah, I got into real estate. Like, there's not much to do on the beach. You either like own a restaurant, and you're a doctor, lawyer, or a realtor. Like, there's not really much else if you want to like go to the moon. You know what I mean? Like, we're in small town Alabama. It's a really like one of the most beautiful places in the world. Like, the beaches are white powder sands, but it's still a small town. Our population still to this day in the whole area, Orange Beach Gulf Shores, is 18,000 people who live here full time. Um, really, really wow. small, right? But we have about three or four million, five million people that visit us uh, in the summertime. So it's a it's a really interesting dynamic. But anyway, you know, real estate was one of those things. I went to college 
and I failed a history class and I said, this isn't for me. <laughs> you know, I was like, OK, I'll be a doctor or lawyer or something. And, and then I was like, after I failed that history class, I was like, OK, you know, real estate, one class, you know, doctor, lawyer, 10 years of school. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I think I'll take plan, you know, A. So uh, I did the one class, barely passed it, um, you know, <laughs> and then after that, I was like, I don't know if I want to do real estate, man, because I was still young. I was 20 or 19 when I took the class. And, you know, the, the guy said, uh, the teacher said, you know, when you take the class, you got uh, a year to take your test. Once you take the test, you got 90 days to find a job. And I was like uh, scared to death. You know, like I do not want to be committed to, to anything right now. I'm still trying to figure this out. So when I passed the class, I was like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do that. So I came back home and, and went back to roofing houses with dad. And after about a week, I was like, OK, I think I'll give this real estate thing a try. Um, <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah, that sounds pretty good. So I went and took the test. And when I passed the test, I was like, uh, as soon as you pass the test, everybody has this, man. When they pass the real estate test, a song starts going off in their head and they just start saying, I'm in the money, I'm in the money. <laughs> like they just think like retirement's on the brink and they're fixing to be a multimillionaire overnight. So I quit roofing and started doing real estate. And after 30 days, I didn't even come close to selling anything, not even a nibble. So uh, I had to go back to roofing. Now I'm doing roofing and real estate at the same time, trying to figure this whole thing out. So it took me eight months to make my first sale. And uh, once I made my first sale, it was like dominoes. I started selling two a month for a while. And, uh, you know, and that and that's when the market started to really blow up, you know. So what year was that? Oh, three. Oh, three. Yeah. Yeah. That's when, three is when it really started to take off. It was like the fog, the mirror, mortgage time. Everybody yeah. is getting them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it was nuts, man. Like prices doubled in two or three years. And uh, I was just a young kid, brand new in real estate. I didn't know what was going on. I was just making a ton of money. That's all I knew. And, uh, you know, I thought this is how real estate's done. You know, I was like, man, I'm a beast. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, just, I, you know, I, I'm a real estate guy. I'm a mogul, you know, at, at 21, you know, whatever. So uh, it was fun, though. Um, you know, I had houses and hummers and cars and investments, and I was just all over the place. But uh, at the end of the day, when the market crashed, you know, I lost everything. And, uh, you know, I made about a million in two years and then lost it all over the next two years. So I was... Uh, you know, bankrupt, sleeping on friends' couches, roofing houses, and finally landed that job on the oil rig. And uh, it was fun. I mean, I, I really, uh, you know, it's all work. Like, when I roofed houses as a kid, it was work. When I got in real estate, I was working. And when I lost everything, I just kept working, you know. And now I'm working now. Like, it, it's all been the same stuff. I mean, it's all just you learn, you adapt, you work, you make mistakes, you learn, you just keep on moving. You know, you just you're going to make mistakes. I mean, you know, there's no, there's no way around failure. You know, I mean, you just, you have to go through it and learn from it and uh, keep moving forward. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's 10% what happens to you, 90% how you respond how you to it. To and and uh, so whenever, whenever it crashed on me, I lost everything, you know, it was kind of shocking because I thought I was like retired and done with all this working stuff. And, uh, <laughs> All this working stuff. Yeah. So, you know, it, during that time, that's I really wanted to know, like, why I failed. You know, why? What what did I do wrong? What are the decisions that I made that put me where I was, which is, you know, had every had a million, lost a million. You know, How did that happen? You know, um, so uh, I read over 100 books. I watched agents who survived the crash, who didn't survive the crash. I watched the market supply, demand, prices. Um, you know, I, I watched, uh, I just, I was just very observant during that time and I was very patient and I just worked my daily work on the roof or on an oil rig. I just worked through it, man. And just, I knew that I was going to get back to the top. 
Um, I just, I wanted to take my time with it this time and figure out what I did wrong. That way, when I made it back, I could keep it. So, uh, yeah, it was very interesting, man. Um, everything I learned through there. But the one thing I really got out of it was that in the beginning of my career, I was so short term minded and I was more worried about the transaction. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, I learned a lot of things. <laughs> But the bottom line was, is that your mindset needs to be long term and relationship oriented. Um, so, you know, it, it's it, there, there's a lot of there's a lot that goes into it. But that's really the bottom line. And, and when you when you think long term and you quit worrying about the transaction, it's crazy what happens, man. So many transactions just all of a sudden come to you. It's kind of like reverse psychology on the market. You know, it's like. You, you know, by by acting like you don't want a deal with someone, you end up getting the deal with them, you know, because they they end up realizing that you're not interested in just a deal and you really want to help them. Right. And so that's really what I learned through through the crash. And so but when I learned it and figured it out, I still didn't know if it worked. You know, I was like, I was just I just thought it worked. And so I was in the uh, that's you know, I was like, OK, now I got to test this out, you know. Is, uh, you know, is my new train of thought, is my new mindset, is it, is it really what's going to get me back? Is it really what's going to get me through the next market crash? Is it really what's the thing? So uh, in 2008, I got laid off from the oil rig. You know, gas prices plummeted and I got laid off from the oil rig and uh, I was kind of forced back into real estate, but I'd already been kind of tinkering with it. Um, I'd already been, you know, reaching out to some people and put, you know, trying to put some stuff together. So I got laid off from the oil rig and kind of forced back into real estate. I sold a couple of foreclosures to some buyers and that gave me financial breathing room to give uh, real estate a second chance, like a full time second chance. And that's when I was like, thank you, Jesus. You know, like I'm not going to screw this up again. And uh, so I start. I got to work. You know what I mean? And started uh, really trying to put my new mindset and implement, you know, everything that I've learned. Uh, and that's when I just really started killing it. I did really good in 2008, did really good 2009, uh, made about 100,000 a year those two years. And then 2010, the oil spill, BP oil spill hits. And uh, the BP oil spill hit our area so hard economically, you know, we're right on the beach. So, that year, there was basically no renters that came down because they were scared of the chemicals and stuff. And, uh, you know, it was a mini it was a mini recession. And, uh, you know, sellers were dumping properties. Agents were leaving the area. And uh, uh, basically, I was sitting here saying yippee ki -yay, because I could test out my theories of how to make it through any market situation, you know, during that time. So I told all the agents around me, I was like, y'all just stay calm, you know, let your sellers and buyers and clients know what's going on with the oil spill and just see what you can do to help them. And in 2010, during that year, I made way more money than I made the year before, you know, through this little mini crash. And that's when I got, that's when I had the confidence in myself that I could make it through anything. And, you know, that I figured like I had real estate figured out like to a certain extent, uh, and that's when I came to Remax. You know, I always wanted to be at Remax, but I was always kind of scared of that desk fee. So, uh, so when I finally figured out that I could do consistent sales under any market situations, you know, that's when I was like, all right, I'm ready to go to Remax. So I went to Remax, and then I combined my new <laughs> techniques with uh, the most powerful brand, you know, in real estate. And that's when I really just started really taking everything to another level. Um, so 2014, I hit number one agent in the state for Remax. Um, and then since then, I've sold 100 properties a year as a single agent, you know, did a million GC, over a million GCI 2017. Um, it was just me and an assistant. Um, and I wrote two books. I'm doing podcasts. I'm doing a reality show. I'm coaching. I'm speaking. So it's been a fun ride. Yeah, it sounds like you're hardly, hardly busy. You got not, you know, you don't have much going on. But let's, <laughs> let's, let's go back to uh, 2008, 2010. I just want to talk a little bit more about that. 
you know, weathering the storm because I think now throughout the country, relatively good market, depending on where you are, depending on inventory and all that. But I, I think it's going to help, you know, newer agents that are in the business that come in now, they're like, oh, this is great. I'm writing paper. It's no problem. But when that market eventually does level out, depending where you're at, you know, what what are some of the some of the secrets? You know, obviously education, you read 100 books. I mean, it's maybe give us a couple, just a handful of the books that you've read. And then, um, you know, what were, how did you approach that? What was your strategy like? Like, you you know, you said, okay, I'm out of real estate. I got to get, the, I had to get, you had to get the, the job on the rig and all that. You know, what's your road back look like? Well, it basically, it's just a grind. Like the first thing you got to do, I think I froze up on you for a sec. I think the first thing you got to do is, uh, well, you know, when I look back at it, if I really wanted to pick out like the most important keys to success, um, I kind of uh, came up with these four keys. I think you got you got to believe that you can do it. You got to work hard. You have to adapt, and you have to be patient. And so I think that uh, I think I froze up on you. I think that like believing is you have to believe a hundred percent. And when you actually believe in what you're trying to do a hundred percent then you automatically start taking the actions that's going to get you there. It's like in your mind, in your mind, you've already accomplished it. It's already done. And so you just, it's like a walk in the park, another day in the office, you just start taking the actions you need to make it happen. You know, you got to work hard. That goes without saying adapting is what most people can't do. They just keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. You have to adapt, which is a lot of things you got to learn. You know, that negative emotions are a waste of time, that losing deals is a part of this business, that conversation is the key to all closings, um, you know, that closings happen every day. You know, it's not a, a market problem. It's a it's a that you haven't figured it out problem. Um, you know, there's there's a lot in the adapt part of that. And then the, mo the the biggest thing people don't have is patience. You know, they make a goal and then if they don't hit it that year, you know, they get really upset, which I had a problem with that. You know, I made 600,000 in 2015 and I wanted to make a million. Wait, I made 600 in a, in a 14. I wanted to make a million in 50 and I made a, I made 600 again in 15. And that, and that was, I was kind of upset with that, you know, um, <laughs> just because I didn't accomplish my goal. I'm a very, I'm a very like, I want to make a goal and I want to accomplish that goal. And so um, when I didn't hit it, um, you know, I kind of went through something, you know, I was kind of like down on myself. And so what, what happens is I hit a million in 2017. So, it, so I wanted to hit it in 15. I didn't hit it till 17. All I had to do was continue to be patient, keep doing what I was doing. And so what I learned through that moment was that there's this place in life where a lot of people are very motivated like I was and want to hit goals. And if they don't hit them, they're upset and they're always trying to hit that next goal, next goal, next goal. And they never get there because it's like a carrot in front of your face and you never get there. So you're always upset with yourself. Then there's the people who are very happy and content and not very motivated because they're very happy and content. And they're good with everything. So right. what I found through that situation is that there's a happy medium between being happy but not content where you're happy with where you are, you're satisfied, but, but you're still very hungry moving forward. And if you can really find your like Zen of, of that uh, combination, then you, you're really in a good place. Cause if you're in one or the other, you're, you're in a bad spot. You're either upset because you're not hitting where you want to hit or you're happy. You're not motivated. So if you can be happy and motivated at the same time, then that's a really good place to be. So that's something that I learned through that. But, but patience is, 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 uh, you know, being patient with, with everything. And if you don't hit it this year, go for it the next year and just keep on trying. Um, because you know, it just doesn't happen overnight. So it, to answer your question, I think my road back was that I realized that, uh, that, that I had to think long-term and uh, that's what's really hard for new agents is because they need money now. They want to succeed now. They got to pay their bills now. And, uh, you know, that that's the hard part about real estate. And that's why I tell people that 
are transitioning into real estate from their other job, from a job, is that they really need to replace their income with real estate before they quit that job. You know, a lot of people want to just jump in cold turkey, quit their job with really no, not a lot of money saved up or definitely not a lot, not enough money saved up. And then, and then they fall right on their face and have to go back to their old job because they quit their job too early. So I right. think that's some pretty good advice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like, I like, I like, what, I like you what you I'm getting an echo. Hold on. Okay. I like what you said about comp, well, happy and motivated, but then also having patience. You know, you're talking 2010 oil slick hits paradise. Like, I mean, and you're rather that, you know, some agents might say the sky is on fire. The sky is falling like chicken little. I almost think of, right. The sky is falling real estates. Well, you just said, you know what? You stayed calm. You let people know we're going to get through this. And I think the mindset of remaining calm in that, in, in that time of this really time of disaster, but in a, in a, in a down market is having the confidence knowing that, right? Real estate's a roller coaster. It's going to rebound eventually. But I think you're, you're the one who's in charge of that message to your clients, right? And keeping that message positive. Here's the thing, man. When the market goes down, okay, it creates opportunities, okay? Big time opportunities for real estate agents, all right? The, the first thing you got to realize when the market goes down is that transactions go down. OK, but another thing that goes down is the number of real estate agents and it's always kind of relative to each other. So if, the, if it's a mild crash and transactions go down 10 percent, we're probably going to lose 12, 13, 14, 15 percent of the agents. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. So anyway, like I said, like if you lose 10 percent of, uh, of, of the transactions, you're going to lose even more percentage of the agents. If you lose 30 percent of transactions, you're going to lose 40 or 50 percent of agents. OK, they're just going to slide right off the top. So what happens is during a during a downturn, there's more transactions per agent who stay in the market. OK, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, is that it makes buyers and sellers jump in terms of buyers want to buy right now because the price is down and they want to buy before it comes back up. Okay. Right. Sellers got to sell right now because they're in trouble. The market crashed on them. Right. So, so all you do, even if you're a brand new agent, um, brand new in the business, you're in the business, your first day and the market crashes on you first day in the business and you don't have any clients lined up. You, 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 you call Ricky, you say, what do you do? You, I say, you get Red X, you get a dialer, you start calling property owners and you say, hey, Mr. Property Owner, the market's falling, the sky's falling. Um, do you want to buy because it's so cheap? Do you want to sell because you need to or are you just going to hold and ride this thing out? And depending on which three you want to do, is there an agent that you are going to work with on those three, on one of those three? And if there's not, I would love to work with you. If so, have a good day. You're in good hands. And you do that over and over and over again. You will sell more real estate during a market crash. Um, you know, uh, if you if you have the right mindset and you handle it correctly and you understand what's going on. So some, most of the time it takes somebody actually having to go through a market crash like I did to actually learn this and be able to implement it. And so it's really hard for new agents. You know, they're just thinking the sky's falling and transactions are falling, prices are falling, but it actually creates opportunity. I like, I like that a lot. So <clears throat> you're, you're fairly busy. All the things you've been talking about that you're doing, how do you find a balance between it all? You know, how, what does your daily schedule look like? How do you, you know, how do you time block? How do you, how are you productive and then still maintain a happy relationship with your, with your new wife now, right? Three, three months, four months, newlywed. Yeah. Yeah. Three months, dude. We're calling up the big three right now. Big three. Yeah. <laughs> so balance is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm okay with chaos. I'm a very unorganized person. And to be honest with you, I believe that people that are very organized, um, it's really tough for them to sell a lot of property because they're spending all their time organizing. Right. So I think the people who, who are worried about, see, I don't have a CRM. 
a lot of people are like, what CRM do you use, man? You're killing it. You have all these deals. You're doing all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't have a CRM. And so it's not a knock on CRMs. It, it, it you know, I think CRMs are great. What it is, is it, it's proof that you don't need a CRM, right? A lot of people, a lot of agents are out there doing things that don't matter. When it really comes down to it, they're doing what doesn't matter, like worrying about what CRM they're using, what the business card looks like, you know, if they're, you know, like what Facebook ad they're going to run, you know, what, what, how, where they're going to buy their leads, which is all BS, by the way. It, it's, you know, all that matters really is, is long-term relationships with new property owners all the time. That's all that matters. If all you did was sit around and call property owners and create lifelong relationships with them and have a system in place to stay in touch with them forever, then you're golden. Right. But if you do everything except that, chances are very slim you're going to make it in this business. So let's dive a little bit deeper with that. How how do you do that? I mean, how do you how do you have long term relationships? How do you focus you have a on personality? You have everybody. <laughs> has, everybody has their own personality, even if it's not any good. You have your own personality. and You will connect. <laughs> You, you will connect with, like a lot of people say, you know, think they're scared and they think that people don't like them and they think that they don't have the personality and they, they're nervous and stuff. Well, the thing is, is if, if you would, if you would quit being selfish, right? Because if you succeed, everyone around you succeeds, right? So quit being selfish and not, not uh, being a little uncomfortable so that you can succeed and put yourself in front of people and have a little confidence, people will start to like you. They'll feel that confidence. And they'll feel, if you're comfortable with people, they feel comfortable with you. So, and that's what they want in a real estate agent, somebody they can feel comfortable with. So, you know, you use your personality to find the people who you connect with, you know, the property owners that you connect with in your market. And that's the bottom line. I mean, you know, um, you, you, you call, you work the numbers and that's what people don't want to do. See here, here's the thing, Jay, man, let me, let me break it all the way down for you. Break it down. There, there's an unlimited amount, unlimited. Okay. Which, which means infinity more than you can handle ever in your life. There's an unlimited amount of property owners in every agent's market that will deal with them only. Every agent, there's an unlimited amount more than they can handle of property owners that will deal only with them, right? For the rest of their lives, because they like them so much, they connect with them, they connect with their personality in a certain way that's unique. And that's it, bottom line. And the problem is that these agents haven't put the work in to actually find those people. And that, that's what they don't want to do. That it's a lot of work to actually call the amount of property owners you have to call to find those few that will work with you forever. And that's what people don't want to do. You know, they make calls and make a hundred calls and they won't get anything the first day. And so, you know, they felt uncomfortable. They didn't get anything. So now they're not going to do it anymore. And then six months later, they're back to working at Arby's or, a, you know, a hotel or roof and houses. So, just showing your person being being real. And I think that's a good point there that, that you brought up because there's so many agents that are worried about separating their real estate self from their personal self or their real self. Right. And I think there there shouldn't be a separation like what, what you're saying or what I'm hearing is that it's just be you. Right. Listen, man, when you talk <laughs> to your father on the phone. Right. You have a you are used to the way that you talk. He talks and you're you know, you're used to like that conversation. So that's a comfortable conversation. What you need to do is 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 think about that and 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 implement that same like mindset as you were talking to a family member. That's how you talk to your clients. OK, so so this is how you do that to get really technical. When, when you're talking to a, uh, someone on the phone, a prospect you've never talked to, what you have, the skill that you have to develop, and it comes from making calls. You know, it's a chicken and egg thing. Everybody wants the skills, right, to make the calls, but you got to make the calls to, to develop the skills. Right. So, so the skill that you need to develop that's more important than anything is being able to read people on the phone. Like you have to be able to, like, like the first part of the conversation is set up for you to ask a couple questions that aren't even real estate related, 
how are you doing? Or it's a beautiful day. Isn't it gorgeous outside? You're looking for their response to a couple of questions to, to read them. What kind of mood they're in? How are they feeling? Are they happy, sad? You know, or do they talk fast? Are they country? What's their accent? You know, right. what's going on with these people? Right. And then if you get really good at actually listening to what's going on with them through the tone of their voice and what and all that, and you adapt your conversation accordingly, that's the skill you need to develop. And you, and you do it by uh, remembering how you feel whenever you're talking to friends or family on the phone. And implement that same mindset when you're talking to these new people. The only difference is you've never talked to this person before. So you have to get good at honing in that skill of being able to talk to them like family, um, like being able to adapt to sound like you're their brother or you're their cousin or something, you know? I like that. I like that. All right. Well, all right. Well, <coughs> go again. We're coming up on our 30 minute mark. Um, the last question that we ask most folks is, you know, if you were you were looking back at the at the twenty year old, bright eyed Ricky Caruth about to get in real estate, or any new agent in, in in general about to get in real estate, you know, what what little nuggets would you would you leave as parting advice? Like, do these things, and of course, we, in the comments, we're going to tag your books because they should they should get your books so they can get a lot more of the information that we're talking about here more in depth. Uh, but what kind of information would you give? given the expertise and the knowledge that you have now? Well, if I were going to talk back to like a, a younger Ricky Caruth, that's probably a whole yeah. different conversation than like a brand new agent. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So like the old Ricky Caruth, I would tell the old Ricky Caruth, keep working hard, right? Like continue doing what you're doing, number one. But number two, that, you know, when you're talking to a prospect and they tell you no, it doesn't mean no. It means not right now, maybe later. Thanks for asking. Please stay in touch. Um, so those are the two things I would tell my formal self. If I were talking to a brand new agent in today's market, because this is the thing you guys got to understand. I didn't have Facebook, Zillow, Trulia, Mojo, Red X. I didn't have any of that when I, when I first started real estate. I was in 2002. Um, Facebook started in 2002. Nobody knew, even knew about it. Like it, all the all the stuff that that people have at their fingertips right now is amazing. And I'll tell you too, man. Um, like uh, the fact that there has to be an actual conversation had before there can be a transaction is the reason why technology will not replace real estate agents. And if you think about it. Since 2002 to now, when I started, the commission technology hasn't even cut our commission down. It's still five or six percent. It hasn't changed at all. It hasn't even knocked a dent in it. So I think that um, I think that in the future going forward, I think our commission might get disrupted a little bit with some of the stuff going on out there. But it's not going to be anything to worry about. It's not going to replace real estate agents. Um, if you're professional, hardworking, and you understand long-term relationships and you, you are dependable, um, people are going to deal with you, even with all this stuff going on. But what I would say is, is take advantage of the technology because the technology has actually helped real estate agents. Instead of hurt real estate agents, it's helped us. I mean, dude, I can do so much. You know, it, it's, it's like you ask me, how do I balance and how do I do so much stuff? It's because of technology, man. Like there's no way that I could be communicating with the agents around the world like I'm doing and, uh, you know, uh, all the different things, the videos and all the different stuff. You know, there's no way that I could have the impact I'm having on the world, the real estate world, if it wasn't for technology. And it's made selling real estate so much easier. I mean, dude, even when they just came out with MLS, you know, that was like. I mean, I can't MLS was like brand new when I got in. And uh, so I didn't have to deal with the pre MLS, you know, world. Right. But uh, I heard all about it and I can't imagine, you know, and I'm sure a lot of these agents, uh, mm -hmm. new agents listening, can't imagine what life would be like without Zillow and all these other newfound things. But at the end of the day, don't chase shiny bullets. Don't uh, try to. Uh, you know, don't try to find the easy way out. 
Um, a lot of agents, what I see them doing is trying all these new things and uh, they, they fail. You know, they try something that doesn't work. They try something and everything they try is something to make is, is something to like bring like fast success. And I think that uh, and I think what I'm seeing is a lot of people trying all these really quick, you know, get rich quick real estate things and it's not working. And then the ones that actually succeed end up figuring that out and then realizing that you got to call property owners all day long to your ears bleed to succeed in this business at a very high level. You see what I'm saying? So Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to leave you with this, Jay, man. Check this out. Like my whole purpose for like coming on with you and writing the books and doing the speaking and the coaching and all that. My entire purpose is to reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry. And so how I'm actually going to do that is by bringing awareness that closings are happening every single day and conversation is the key to all closings. Even if it's an internet lead, you have to actually talk to them before you actually do a deal. So if conversations are the key to all closings and closings are happening every day, let's just, let's just fast track this thing. Let's just, let's just skip all this and let's just do it, go on the fast track to success and go ahead and have as many conversations as we can possibly have every day so that we can have as many closings as we can have. And if we're going to have conversations, why not have with the, with the most, the highest quality prospects in any market, which are property owners, property owners buy and sell. Right. People look at property owners as only sellers, but see property owners buy and sell. And if you use property owners as your source of buyers and sellers and you don't do buyer leads, you don't do all this nonsense stuff on the side and you just concentrate on long term relationships with property owners, then you're going to you're going to succeed at a high level for a very long time. and You'll be able to withstand a market crash. You see, I want agents to be in the position where they can actually survive a market downturn. And so that that's what I'm that's what I'm preaching, man. That's my thing. That's that's what I'm that's why I'm getting out there. Well, I I appreciate you taking the time sharing that with us. And I think the moral of what I heard what I heard today is that there's no secret to success except for for hard. We're looking at you. It's not you weren't an overnight success. You put the grind in, right? It's hard work. You focus on relationships. You you worked with technology. It's not you know you didn't rely on it, but you used it to to help you be more productive. Cause mm. I, I, it's a great point you brought up. Technology is not going to replace us. It's always about the relationship and about conversations. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Ricky, thank you so much. We're going to tag your books and, and your pages in the, in the comments below. And again, if you like what you heard today at any point, tag somebody in the comments, but then also you can put millennial who down in the comments below. You'll be a little robot. will contact you and subscribe you to our, our shows here. So thanks again, Ricky, for, for coming on and making it, 2018 is going to be your best year ever, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely, man. And 2019 will be the best and 2020 will be the best. Dude, look, I'm going to work so hard for 2030 that I can't help but to crush 2018. I love it. We're going to end on that note. Have a great day, everybody.